Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're taking a trip down memory lane for a throwback tech look at a phone that was way ahead of its time, the HTC HD 2. A device that not only boasted impressive specifications for its time, but also became a pioneer in the world of mobile modding and customization. From its expansive display to its powerful hardware, the HTC HD 2 left an indelible mark on the smartphone landscape. So buckle up and get ready for a dose of nostalgia, let's rediscover the magic of the HTC HD 2 together. Do you remember what you were doing in 2009 or 15 years ago? In this year, Barack Obama became president, Michael Jackson died, Bitcoin was launched. The most popular movies were James Cameron's Avatar, the second Twilight movie, and the sixth Harry Potter. In the music space, Poker Face by Lady Gaga was a hit. But what about the tech world? In 2009, the smartphone landscape was just starting to heat up, with both established players and new challengers vying for market share. iPhone 3GS premiered in the summer, BlackBerry ruled the business professional space, and Samsung hadn't yet introduced their first Galaxy S smartphone. At the time, I was still using my old Sony Ericsson Walkman phone, an awesome phone for its time, but in a completely different league with what HTC have been preparing, a true rising star under the name HTC HD2. Do you remember, or if you are younger, have you even heard of Windows Mobile? A mobile operating system developed by Microsoft for smartphones and personal digital assistants or PDAs. It first appeared in 2000, but following the rise of the newer iOS and Android, Windows Mobile never equaled the success and faded rapidly in the following years. The HTC HD2 was the world's first Windows mobile phone with a capacitive screen and also packed the world's largest mobile phone display too. It's also the first Windows mobile phone to use HTC's Sense UI, previously used on the company's Android handsets, bringing with it Facebook integration and direct Twitter access, as well as masking well the operating system beneath it. Let's start with the biggest hit of the phone. The HD2 features a 4.3-inch capacitive touchscreen display. At the time of its release in 2009, this size was considered quite expensive for a smartphone, offering users ample screen real estate for various tasks. The screen was the largest ever seen on a smartphone up to this point. The resolution is 480 by 800 pixels. While this may seem modest by today's standards, it was considered high definition at the time, providing crisp and clear visuals. Another big hit for the HTC was the employment of a capacitive touchscreen, which allowed for smooth and responsive touch input. This technology was superior to the resistive touchscreen displays commonly found on smartphones at the time. Resistive touchscreens are generally less accurate and precise. They require more pressure to register touch input and lack multi-touch support. For example, with this type of display, you can't pinch to zoom. The HD2 is equipped with a 1 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon S1 processor. At the time of its release in 2009, this was considered a high-performance processor, enabling smooth multitasking, responsive app launches, and fluid navigation through the user interface. I'm pleasantly surprised how snappy is the phone nowadays. Navigation is still fast and responsive. In comparison, the same cannot be said for even newer Android phones. Yes, there's almost nothing you can do with the phone now because of the outdated software, but still. I'm starting to like Windows Mobile. With only two major players in the market now, there isn't much variety. But that's another topic. Although the HD2 initially shipped with Windows Mobile, it gained notoriety for its ability to run alternative operating systems, including various versions of Android and even early builds of next-gen Windows Phone. This may sound strange from today's perspective, almost nobody is messing around with their phone firmware now, but back in the day, the HTC HD2 had an active modding and customization community, with users developing custom ROMs, kernels, and tweaks to optimize performance, add new features, and improve overall stability. This aftermarket support extended the device's lifespan and allowed users to enhance its performance beyond the capabilities of the stock firmware. Let's not forget that 15 years ago, the stock software was not as polished as it is now. On my first touch with the phone, it took me a while to figure out how to unlock it, as there's no side lock unlock button like we're used to these days. 
Below the screen sit five small buttons that conform to call answer, home, start, back, call end. You can see the little Microsoft logo, which also marks the start menu in the desktop windows. The buttons are small and wobbly, but I like them. Maybe I am nostalgic for hardware buttons, because the front of a modern smartphone consists of just one huge piece of display nowadays. Navigation through the old apps is an interesting nostalgic trip. You can see the old icons and design of apps like YouTube and Google Maps. Quite unexpectedly for me, it turned out that Google Maps still works today. It's a very basic version of the service. You can just see the maps, but they are not old and preloaded on the device. The streets and the locations are up to date. Unfortunately, nothing else can be used anymore. Even the browsers are so old that they don't meet modern security standards and cannot render websites. I'm talking in plural because the HTC HD 2 came with two browsers out of the box, the legendary Internet Explorer and Opera. And the difference between the two was pretty major. Internet Explorer supported flash video, but not multi-touch browsing, and Opera vice versa. So you had to use both of them, depending on the website you are visiting. Unfortunately, back then, Flash was the dominant platform for online multimedia content. Dark times for the World Wide Web. Let's say a few words about the camera. It's a 5 megapixel snapper with autofocus and dual LED flash. The quality of the photos was good back in 2009. The video recording capabilities were less impressive and even disappointing for some people. Just a VGA recording at 30 FPS Given the video capabilities of other modern phones and bearing in mind the powerful CPU, the expectations were for a HD recording. Speaking of other phones, I decided to look at how the HTC HD2 was priced. Its launch price in 2009 varied depending on the carrier and whether it was offered with a contract or sold unlocked. With a two-year contract, the HTC HD2 could be obtained for around $199 to $299 depending on the carrier and specific plan. The iPhone 3GS launched at a starting price of $199 with a two-year contract, similar to the HTC HD2. BlackBerry Curve phones were generally more affordable, ranging from around $50 to $150 with a contract. The Motorola Droid launched a few months later than the HD2 and had a similar contract price of around $199 with a two-year contract. But unlocked, the HTC HD2 was on the pricier side, around $500 to $600 or from $720 to $870 in today's money. This can be attributed to its powerful specs and large display, which were more premium features at the time. In conclusion, I can say that it was interesting for me to go back in time with this HTC HD2. Having experienced what the smartphone experience was like back then, I can appreciate more how much better and polished it is now. For example, I faced the problem of how to transfer the photos I took with the phone to my computer. It doesn't work with just connecting the USB cable. There was no way to use the internet either. Eventually it got down to sending photo by photo via the slow Bluetooth connection. Overall, the HTC HD2 was a highly regarded smartphone during its time. It is notable for its historical significance and for its role in popularizing large screen smartphones. It also gained a reputation for being developer friendly, which allowed users to customize the phone beyond what was originally possible. A piece of history that will remain in my collection.